Some of the discoveries made by archaeologists are surprising. We don't just mean that they're surprising to us. They also surprise the archaeologists who find them. Not everything that our ancient ancestors left behind for us to discover is easily explained away. So today, we are going to take a close look at some of the most incredible and mysterious archaeological discoveries of all time. Strap in! It's going to be a wild ride! The Sacro Catino, also known as the Grail of Genoa, is an artifact so old that its history has been lost to time. Legends tell us that it was first brought to Genoa in Italy in 1101 by Guglielmo Embriaco in the year 1101, having been captured during the conquest of Caesarea during the First Crusade. That's not the only thing that legends and folklore have to say about it. When it arrived in Italy, it was said to be the plate used by Jesus Christ during the Last Supper. The people of the time thought it was made from emerald, but a later study performed during the time of Napoleon proved that wasn't the case. Despite looking like it was made from the precious stone, it's actually blown glass, which means it can't possibly date back to the time of Jesus. Knowing what it isn't, though, doesn't get us any closer to knowing what it is. The mystery behind the artifact makes it one of the most visited pieces at the Museo del Tesoro inside the Cathedral of San Lorenzo, where it's still treated as a holy object, even if Jesus never ate his lamb off it. Much like the Sacro Catino, the Disco Colgante is an artifact of unknown origin. Experts can't even agree on how old it is, let alone who made it or why. Some people point to it as evidence that extraterrestrials visited Earth in the distant past, whereas others see it as nothing more than a hoax. The object has been studied and tested multiple times, but the results are always inconclusive. Some studies have suggested that it's 2,000 years old, but others say that it's only around 400. However old it is, it's impossible to ignore the fact that its design closely resembles the Milky Way galaxy, the corner of the universe that our solar system calls home. The similarity is so striking that there's even a hole in the object in the exact place our Sun would appear on a star map. Such knowledge of celestial bodies ought to have been impossible for people living four centuries ago. So the idea that it could have been designed 2,000 years ago is incredible. Of course, we shouldn't ignore the possibility that the resemblance to the Milky Way is a coincidence. But then if we're wrong about it being a star map, what's it actually supposed to be? The question of what the people of 3,000 years ago thought they were doing when they created the Nimrud lens is unlikely ever to be resolved. The object, also known as the layered lens, has the exact same magnification properties as the first telescope. The difference is that the telescope was an invention of the early 17th century. The Nimrud lens is more like 3,000 years old. Its discovery in the ruins of an ancient Assyrian palace in Iraq in 1850 suggests that it once belonged to someone with great wealth and power, but we have no idea what they might have used it for. We can make a few guesses, though. It might have been a burning lens, used to start fires by focusing the rays of the sun. It might also have been a magnifying glass, which would have been centuries before its time if it was a deliberate invention. Whatever it is, it was built to last. Fashioning a lens like this out of rock crystal made it robust enough to stand the passage of time, so people will still probably be studying it and trying to work out why it was created another 3,000 years from now. While we might not understand the purpose of the three artifacts we've seen so far, at least we know their names. We don't even know what to call this ancient Egyptian artifact. You'll find it in the Leiden Museum of Antiquities in the Netherlands, where it's been since 1830. It's an alabaster disc, possibly a tabletop, that was created around 5,000 years ago. What makes it so unusual is the complex series of designs and inscriptions that cover its surface, which remind some observers of a circuit board, or possibly even a series of control panels. There are a few small holes drilled into the surface of the disc, which would possibly have provided a space for candles to be inserted into it, or possibly for oils to be stored. An object with such a humble purpose surely wouldn't have been decorated so elaborately, though. What are these markings? Might they be instructions of some kind? If we could understand them, would they tell us what the object was used for? Historians say that it probably had a religious or ceremonial purpose. But then again, 
That's what historians tend to say about every artifact that they don't understand. We know and love the colossal heads of the Olmec as some of the greatest works of sculpture from the ancient world. But we don't really know very much about them. We don't know why the Olmec went to so much trouble to make them, or who or what they're supposed to represent. Seventeen of the giant stone heads have been recovered from ancient Olmec territory, all of which are now in museums. It's been speculated that they're representations of former rulers of the civilization, which thrived in Mexico from 1200 BCE to 400 BCE. But they could just as easily be depictions of deities. All of the heads have flat backs, suggesting that they were designed to be seen only from the front, and might once have been painted with bright colors. Confusingly, they're carved from basalt boulders of a kind that doesn't occur naturally in the places they've been found. On average, the boulders must have been transported more than 50 miles before they were carved and put in situ. Given that they each weigh up to 40 tons, that would have been a difficult and complex operation. Since we're talking about ancient South American civilizations, this would be a good time to discuss the Akambaro figurines. These small clay dolls of animals, people, and humanoid figures are considered to be some of the continent's most exquisite works of ancient art, but only by the people who believe them to be genuine. There are plenty of folks who think they're fakes. Those who say they're genuine artifacts say that they're relics of the Chupacuaro culture of ancient Mexico, who lived around 2,400 years ago. They believe the story of German archaeologist Waldemar Yilzerud, who says he found them in the mountains close to Acambaro in 1945. Those who say they're fakes point to the fact that several of the sculptures appear to represent dinosaurs, creatures that ought to have been unknown by people living in that era. They are also suspicious of the fact that the figurines are remarkably undamaged for clay artifacts that have allegedly been left out on the mountains for more than 2,000 years. The only person who'd know the truth is Faldemar Yilzrid himself, and unfortunately, he passed away many years ago, taking his secrets to the grave with him. If you were to visit the Walters Museum in Maryland, USA, you'd find a very curious sculpture nicknamed the Crystal Astronaut. It has a nickname because nobody knows its real name, and nobody knows where it came from either. The museum says that it was found elsewhere in the USA, although they can't confirm precisely where, and it's approximately 4,000 years old. The astronaut part of the nickname comes from the fact that some people who've seen it believe it resembles a man in a spacesuit, although not everybody agrees with that assessment. Even if you believe that it looks more like a nude human being than an astronaut, you can't deny that the craftsmanship that went into making it is phenomenal. How could someone working with the type of tools that were available 4,000 years ago create something so beautiful from a material as hard as rock crystal? Who was even living on the North American continent at that time to do such a thing? Representations of astronaut-like figures appear in the ancient myths and legends of many civilizations across the world. Could this be yet another representation of that same ancient mystery? The ancient Mayans, with their doomsday prophecies and advanced knowledge of astronomy, are one of the most mysterious civilizations of the ancient world, right down to the fact that they seemingly disappeared without a trace. Many people believe that the Mayans had contact with an extraterrestrial civilization, and some of the artifacts that they left behind seem to lend weight to that belief. One of the most compelling is the Stone of the First Meeting, identified as such by an inscription on the jade slab. Upon its surface, we can clearly see a human being bowing in deference to a creature that looks a lot like the traditional depiction of a classic gray alien. The stone is undeniably ancient and is a genuine Mayan artifact. Similar depictions of creatures that look like this appear on other ancient Mayan artifacts and in the artifacts of numerous other ancient civilizations all over the planet. Historians and scientists prefer to describe the figure in the carving as a depiction of a deity. But who's to say the deities that the Mayans worshipped weren't actually alien? Why is it that we so often seem to deny the truth of things that are right in front of our eyes? We can say with great confidence that the people of ancient Mongolia and Siberia didn't believe in Santa Claus. So what's the true meaning of these so-called deer stones that can be found all over their former territories? Often found close to burial mounds, 
The stones stand in clusters and are often more than 15 feet tall. On their surface, you'll find carvings of deer flying through the sky. The tradition of creating these stones appears to have been going on for a long time and been refined through the ages. The earliest of the stones, which was made about 3,000 years ago, has a basic, cartoonish representation of deer on its surface. The more recent stones, made several centuries later, show far more detailed deer with more realistic features. While we don't know who made them for sure, it's likely that they're the work of a nomadic Bronze Age culture. While we can only guess at their purpose or significance, it's worth noting that the later deer stones also have drawings of the sun etched onto their surface. Historians are aware of a few shamanistic practices in ancient Siberia that involved worshipping reindeer and the sun, so there's presumably a connection here even if we can't be sure what it is. Back in 2011, fans of science fiction got very excited when an object that resembled a crashed spaceship was found on the bed of the Baltic Sea. To them, it looked just like the Millennium Falcon from the Star Wars movies. Scientists weren't sure what they were looking at, but they were fairly sure it wasn't a spaceship. Despite that, it took them nine years to come up with a better answer, and not everyone is satisfied by it. In January 2020, experts declared that the object that's become known as the Baltic Sea Anomaly is nothing more than a glacial deposit, carved into the seabed as glaciers moved across it during the last ice age. The person who found it disagrees with that assessment. Peter Lindbergh, who was in charge of the Ocean X team who discovered the 70-foot-long object, says that he's seen it with his own eyes, and there's no way it could be a natural structure. He also says that when his team got close to it, all of their electrical equipment stopped working. He remains convinced that it's a spaceship, and so are many people who've studied these images. The most famous mummified human bodies in the world are those that were created in ancient Egypt, but perhaps they shouldn't be. Those mummies were created deliberately using chemical processes. The mummies of San Bernardino in Colombia occurred naturally, and unlike their Egyptian counterparts, they're not decomposing. They were found by accident during the 1950s, when a localized flood forced the abandonment of a small village and the relocation of its cemetery. When workers dug up the graves to move their occupants, they expected to find nothing but skeletons. They were shocked and terrified to discover that, in many cases, the bodies they'd been hired to move still had all of their skin, hair, and clothing. What makes the situation even stranger is that unlike the mummies that you'll find in Egyptian tombs, these aren't the bodies of rich, famous, or influential people. They're everyday people who lived and died in the village and were buried below ground in a completely normal manner. This stubborn refusal to decompose hasn't been noted in any graveyards elsewhere in Colombia, so it's possible that the enigma has something to do with the ground they were buried in. But scientists have no idea what that something might be. You don't have to understand rocket science to know what you're looking at when you see the CBU manuscript. It's a design for the construction of a rocket. It looks very similar to the type of rocket that first took human beings into space during the 20th century. There's just one problem with that, though. The CBU manuscript wasn't drawn during the 20th century. In fact, it was completed during the 16th. How is that possible? We wish we knew. The document was found in Romania in 1961 and identified as being the work of Conrad Haas, a military engineer from Transylvania who passed away in 1576. His design describes the use of a burning liquid fuel source to power the rocket and even includes delta formation fins. Haas had been asked to find a way of combining fireworks with weaponry, and this is what he came up with. For reasons we'll never understand, his commanders chose not to follow up on the idea, and nobody would build anything like this for almost 400 years. This idea is so far ahead of its time that it's almost unbelievable. It's the equivalent of finding a blueprint for the internet drawn during the 1700s. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!